TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me. We don't forget we got merch, you get me. And we also got the, uh, this is where you can catch any lives. You can go replay full lives, fast, far through them, forward through them, and all that, man. Just go to twitch.com and type in the lit one. And don't forget, we do got Patreon as well. We watch Monday through Friday. We have started Shameless UK. We'll be posting that soon again. This is Turd Towns. <laughs> the eight worst places in Kent, UK. That's tough. I haven't watched Turd Towns in a minute. Salute, though, my boy. No, don't start. Don't, don't. This is the intro? This is the new one? Wilmart. Hello, welcome back to Turd Towns, the channel that brings you the lesser known places in the UK. For good, but usually for bad reasons. What do you all think of that opening intro graphic? That was wasn't decent. made by me, I'm not that talented. It was made by a much more talented person, Ollie's Illustrations, who's detailed. That was decent. I didn't know that, like, I felt that it was new. Tells are in my description. Anyway, today was the first for me as I made it to the other side of London and the home county of Kent. I assumed this was going to be a really nice county because all the rich people can easily commute into London, but man was I wrong. Turns out there's two sides of Kent. The general rule of thumb is that if a place is on the northern coast, it isn't very nice. The rest of the county is mostly nice. I did not enjoy my trip here. It made me miss the Uranian Welsh <laughs> Valleys. Uh, the pure negativity that he uh, puts out is just great. Appropriate, because I felt like I was being pissed on this entire trip. It truly was the worst weather I've had to film in so far. Before I give you the eight biggest turd towns in Kent, I have to ask, how do you cope with driving in Kent? It's appalling. It takes forever to get anywhere. The motorways are all blocked or limited, roundabouts everywhere. And I do like driving, but not in Kent. Which county should we visit next? I actually took this suggestion from a YouTube comment from Dinah Stone, so it's always worth letting us know. Would you be interested in a video in Northern Ireland? Now, before the video starts, please give us a like, share, and subscribe to help Turd Towns thrive. Here are the eight biggest Turd Towns of Kent. Ipswich. Number eight, Gravesend. The horrible name matches this horrible Gravesend. town. Gravesend? Gravesend is situated on the River Thames and has a population of 58,000. The name translates roughly to End of the Grove. You could tell this place was named a very long time ago as there was no grove in sight. Just endless grey, grey, and more grey. It certainly felt like the end. Gravesend is about an hour from central London and you can instantly see London's influence over this town. Graffiti everywhere, filthy looking streets and an overriding feeling of doom and gloom. Apparently this town has been rejuvenated since getting high speed rail to London. If that's the case, I'd hate to see what it looked like before. Gravesend has- It does not look rejuvenated. <coughs> and I want to be like, yo, he probably just recorded all of the bad spots, but it all looked bad from the aerial. A few claims to fame, although none of them are exactly good. Pocahontas. Yeah, her. And this is really random, but she died here. It is said she took one look at the town and it was so bad it caused her body to go in shock and she died. Nobody knows exactly- That's good cap. That is excellent negativity. Did you cut that negative off the top of his brain? He freestyled that negativity? Or is that a real fact? Where her body is buried, but it's here somewhere under all this charming grey concrete. Gravesend also has the world's oldest iron pier. At the same time, it sets a record for being the least impressive pier. Also, a record was set here for a- Why? Pilot flying to South Africa and back in 39 hours and 36 minutes. This record still stands today, as they're unable to find a pilot who's happy to come back to Gravesend. Mm, they prefer it once they've made it games. to Cape Town. Of course, lots of the town's history is intertwined with ships <coughs> on the River Thames. The shopping area is quite grand, and you can clearly see that it could be nice here, but now the buildings are boarded up and collapsing. One of the only areas which has had money spent on it is the area around the council building, which is amusing because the building itself is one of the ugliest pieces of trash I've ever seen. <laughs> it looks like a half-finished prison. There's a really <coughs> annoying one-way system around the town centre. It does. Fun. Not as much fun as some people had on Halloween when a mass group of 30 men were stopping cars on this one-way system and smashing them up. I'm sure it was just a bit of Halloween fun, though. 
On the positive front, the crime isn't actually that bad here, 118 in a thousand. I expected it to be more so close to London. It's also cheap, for Kent at least, with an average house fetching 338,000. This has made it a popular commuter town. There's a lot of history here and a good tidy up would really help Grey's End before it gets into too much of a state and really does reach the end. I got a time frame to get this album done. Kiki takes on too much. Oh. Not gonna lie, they said under 338 and I was like, oh, that is not cheap. I don't know what they were talking about. That's expensive. Number seven, Ramsgate. Ramsgate is a famous resort town with a population of 42,000 situated on a rock jutting out of the English Channel. The weather wasn't going to stop me, although it did stop my drone. I was maybe expecting a bit worse, but I did find some happiness here down by the marina, which is a pretty nice part of town. It's quite attractive, you could perhaps bring a date here, as long as you blindfold them. It looks the nice, the decent. It looks like there's stuff to do the here, and there's also a beach here somewhere. So why does Ramsgate make the list? Well, for starters, the town seems to be filled with weird artsy people from London. Apparently, they like to paint pictures of dogs. Plenty of them around here. The town centre is rubbish, run down and empty, although maybe everyone was hiding from the rain. I sure wouldn't be impressed if I was visiting here, though. The people of Ramsgate are a scruffy bunch. It's hard to tell who is and who isn't homeless. Ramsgate was named the 11th best place to visit in the UK this year. That's if good that's negative. Case, this country is screwed. I wonder if the judges actually visited here. It's just as scruffy and depressing as everywhere else on this list, with the exception being it has a nice seafront area. Ramsgate has an average house price of 322,000 and a crime rate of 136 in 1,000, which isn't exactly brilliant. In closing, it's fine here if only you want to visit the seafront area, but if you walk just a few meters, you'll be reminded that living in Ramsgate ain't really living. It's not that bad, Okay. Number six, Dover. Sticking with the theme of depression and drugs by the sea, it's Dover, another famous <laughs> town with a population of 36,000. Dover is very famous. It feels like it's constantly in the news. <coughs> it's famous for its port and the nearby Channel Tunnel to France. It's famous for its white cliffs, which at times have almost been used to represent England. Doesn't and it's nice, also in the news a lot because of people crossing the channel. But what is the actual town of Dover like? It actually feels a lot smaller than expected. It's basically a narrow place tightly squeezed into a valley. The main street runs down the middle with just about enough room to squeeze in some grotty flats and broken down shops. There's barely enough room here. Dover is like constipation. The shopping situation isn't great and many have opted to move further out of the town. I don't blame them. I have never seen so many layabouts as I did on my visit to Dover. Who are all of these people? I have no oh, idea. Maybe people? they were waiting to board a ship to France. Regardless, they help in making the town centre feel unwelcoming. It's really depressing here, but just like the last entry, it's better by the water, except not as good. There are some nicer parts of Dover. They're on the hillside, the prison? the rich can take part in their favourite pastime, looking down on the poor people. Dover is one of the cheapest places to buy a house in Kent, with an average of only 252000 oh, wait, 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 That's wait, possibly wait, because wait, wait, I've seen the Greggs. The Greggs is the highlight of Dover. Dover is the town with the second worst crime in Kent, 168 in a thousand. The only reason that Dover doesn't feature higher on this list is because- What type of crime though? Is it like, just, like what crime are we talking about? Cause there's levels to crime. Like it's crime where I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. And then there's crime like, oh dang, they cr committing crime, crime. But if it's just crime, one crime, like, yeah, I'm good. Like, right, shoplifting, like, okay. But you know what I'm saying? The town as a whole looks alright and it has multiple means of escape. More than anywhere I've ever been before. But everyone here is escaping in one way or another. Number five, Dartford. Dartford. Mm. Dartford is a large community. Oh, Dart, Dart, okay. To town with a population of 116,000. I really don't remember anything about Dartford and I stayed here for three nights. Well, apart from the horrendous traffic, but I'll get onto that. But what a bland and forgettable place this is. At first it Be real, does the UK got bad traffic? I'd never, I'd never... Like for some reason it's never came up if y'all had good traffic or not. Or, or did y'all have to sit in parking lots full of people? Bad, bad traffic? I couldn't... I don't... Feels like Dartford is going to be a soulless new town with thousands of copy and paste turd covered hutches based around the centre. But when you get to the centre, no, it's actually quite old fashioned and historic. And I have to praise Dartford for its green spaces. It's one of the reasons Dartford doesn't finish higher on this list. The Central Park covers 27 acres. I'm sure that is of a benefit to those who live here. That's where the positives end though. 
Dartford is a very derelict place. It wasn't hard to find boarded up buildings everywhere. It has an extremely unwelcoming town center, which seems to be getting phased out as new flats replace the shops. You, you would think Miami, Miami's downtown is nice. It's not. If you really get in there, it's terrible. Just like Los Angeles, like LA, downtown LA is terrible. But I'm also from Chicago. I think we have the best downtown ever. Like, even if we don't, if somebody can prove me wrong, like, I don't believe you. <laughs> the facts are not there. Downtown Chicago is the best looking. All the shops have moved to retail parks, and it got me thinking, how long before high streets officially die in the UK? It can't be long now. At one point in the town centre, there was a huge group of 50 men deep just stood around doing nothing. I'm not sure exactly what that was about, but I couldn't exactly thrust the camera at them. They're off in the distance somewhere. The very worst thing about Dartford is the never-ending traffic. The town itself is extremely busy and it's hard to cross any roads, but the worst is the M25. That's a major motorway in England which basically just does a loop of London. Except at Dartford, it has to go under the River Thames at the Dartford crossing. Every right. time that I was here, it was hour-long queues and it made all the other roads jammed up too. The pollution clouds billow over Dartford on a cold December evening as Brits desperately try to have two hours to themselves before having to sit in this exact same queue the next day to go back to work. It's a pathetic existence. The cheek of this is that they actually charge motorists to use this crossing. When the Dart really? Dartford crossing was built, they said the charge was temporary until it had been paid for. But the charge still exists to reduce congestion, apparently. And that's despite past governments claiming they'll get rid of the charge. What a joke. They're never going to get rid of the charge. They see how much of a money grab it is. No, I couldn't live around here. It made me feel sick every time I got behind the wheel. The average house in Dartford costs 382000 which is a lot. That's expensive. That's the most expensive one we've seen. Due to its close proximity to London and their high paying jobs. Just be prepared to spend your life traveling to and from work. And when you do finally manage to get home, you're in Dartford. <laughs> Making it. Hey, bro, really hate Dartford. That's tough. Number four, Gillingham. It's the first of our Medway towns to make the list. Basically, Medway is a huge. Wait, where is this? It's the first of our Medway towns in Dartford. Number four, Gillingham. Gillingham? It's the first of our Medway towns to make the list. Basically, Medway is a huge urban sprawl comprised of five towns all joined together. Gillingham has a population of around 108,000. Gillingham. Medway. Ah, <laughs> Gillingham. Yeah, girl, what you gonna do with these? You finna jiggle them? Ah, <laughs> jiggle my balls. <laughs> My bad, the coffee, my bad. Doesn't exactly have a good reputation in England. It was hard narrowing it down. In the end, I've settled for two places. Gillingham makes the list because for the size of the place, it feels like you're in a nothing place. It has to be one of the most depressing places I've had the misfortune of visiting. As you walk along, old men emerge from boozers and spit at your feet. Feral children try to steal your camera and shifty people watch your every move through crusted over eyes. Everybody Ooh, around- They was on your bumper, huh? You getting bullied by kids out there? here looks like bad news and it just doesn't feel safe. There's not really any reason to come down here anyway. Basically, we're quite close to London, so we get all the games without any of the fun. It almost feels like you're in some gloomy London suburb. The only thing that puts Gillingham on the map is its football league team. The deals aren't exactly incredible, but at least it gives people something to do on a Saturday. I like that their stadium is not an out-of-town soulless bowl. The poverty is a real issue in Medway. I've never seen so many people queuing up for a food bank as I saw here. My estimate was around 50 women. Shout out to the volunteers at Gillingham Street Angels for feeding them. Shout out to the women for going to go get their kids food no matter what, man. It take a lot of uh it take a lot of selflessness to get in one of these lines. It's hard to try and be funny at times like this, so I won't. I'll move on to tell you that the crime rate here is 107 in a thousand, making it one of the least crime-filled places on today's list. There we go, oh, Jim, and there's a positive. There are private schools and people commuting to London from here, so it drives the average house price up to 309,000. A real town of haves and have-nots. That bad. Number three, <coughs> Margate. Margate. I heard Margate of Margate. Margate is a resort town with a population of 63,000. It's almost attached to our earlier entry from Ramsgate. Now this is why I do this. The media lie all the time and don't actually visit the places that they talk about. Margate is constantly talked up in the media for how special it is. I honestly thought it was horrible. One of the worst seaside towns I've ever visited. Now I know that I'm visiting in the rain and I know it's out of season, but take the rain away and you still have a promenade of smashed up derelict buildings. Yeah, you still have a horrible high street of nothing but Londoners who couldn't afford Brighton. And you still have terrible. a crime rate of 127 in a thousand, which is the fourth worst in Kent. 
I get that the media do these articles to try and drum up tourism, but wake up. Would you want to visit here? I can see the beach is nice even in the rain, but everything else is... I'm too black for the beach. Like, no, real talk. Like, I don't even go to the beach in America. Like, for what? To be in the sun all day and look at water that I can't swim in? Like, I'm not I'm good. That's not for me. And that's what I mean. Like, I can't swim. Like, I can't get a tan. Like, what, I, what I'm going to the beach, anybody beach for? I'm good. And that's crazy because I live in Miami. I'm still not going to the beach. It's horrible. It's not cozy or cute. It looks like a war zone. Margate seems to be a place frozen in the year 2000. The seafront is dominated by a giant building appropriately called Dreamland. It looks derelict. Apparently, it's a concert venue and an amusement park. What a dreary hellhole. It looks like Chernobyl. Oh, I do like to be <coughs> beside my car so I can get in and leave. Gotta love the gigantic besides my car. That's real? That's not like a prop? Somebody really did that to somebody's car and then nobody picked it up. Oh, so I can get in and leave? Gotta love the gigantic council block on the seafront. Apparently it's a listed building too, so there's no getting rid of that. I know I'm out of season, but why does it look this bad? The rest of the promenade is the same story. This can't all be because I'm out of season. It looks derelict. It's not a good first impression. Why he keeps saying that? What that word even mean, derelict? Like, he said that like 12 times. The town centre is nothing but boarded up shops. For the first time in my life, I was so sad and depressed that I ate at McDonald's. I bet once upon a time this all looked alright, but now it's a state. Houses are expensive here, an average of 337,000. No, uh, you know what? I'm going to take my McDonald's back to the car. I'm going to cry into my Big Mac. <laughs> Number two, Chatham. Chatham is our only other entry from the glamorous area known as Medway, and it has a population of 76,000. Chatham is squeezed Chatham? right up against the tent, Chatham. so you get to look at all that filthy mud and pollution every day. What a treat. On first glance, it seems like it's all going to be bad news, but. The high street here was probably the best I've seen all video. I'm sorry, I say it as I see it. How did it make number two? The range two? of shops here was impressive, especially considering it doesn't look like it's going to have anything at all. Yes, it does have boarded up shops, but it still has a great range of choices. Thumbs up for that. Yes, it does have... Is that... What does that say? Does that say pound? Pound world? Sexy word sexy red took us to pound town. But they taking us to pound world? Am I saying that right? Pound world just left pound world. That's tough. Boarded up shops, but it's that's a great range of Why would they even name it that? I get it, like you trying to be like dollar store because of the pound, but that's crazy. They're wildin'. Choices. Fun. That's why it's boarded up. It's up for that. I'm guessing this is where some Medway shoppers visit. I know there's a big out-of-town thing too. The problem with the town centre is the people hanging around here. They choose to hurl abuse at you from the middle of the path, so you can't even avoid them. Unscrupulous-looking individuals hang around here all day with nothing to do with glare. It ruins your shopping experience. I just <laughs> to relax or let around here all day with nothing to do but glare. It ruins your Hey, he bogus. Who is this, KSI? Is that KSI? Shocking experience. That's tough. That is KSI, ain't it? Alright. He just got finished sparring speed. I just didn't feel like I could relax or let my guard down. It goes further down here when you start walking away from the centre as you somehow always end up in a bad neighbourhood. After spending an hour walking around in the rain in Chatham, I was borderline suicidal. I just couldn't take much more. <laughs> That's why it meant so much to me when a bloke came up to me to tell me that he really liked my camera. What a lovely guy. It's that kind of thing that really brightens up your day. <laughs> Chatham has a crime rate of 123 in a thousand, which is bad for most parts of the country, but it's not too bad for this list. It's also very expensive here, with an average of 304,000. Somehow doesn't feel like it's, it's worth much. it. <coughs> Look at all them pigeons. It's too much nature for me. Can you react to P10 Freestyle after he leaves your ass in mental health? Check it out. Send the link. Sheerness. 
Sheerness is a town of 13,200 situated on its own island, the island of Sheerness. Sheerness. This place is seriously isolated. The drive feels like it lasts forever, and when you finally make it here, you realize that it was a complete waste of time. It's a moldy town, Sheerness. which is barely bigger than a village. It used to be a resort town, but it just wasn't nice enough here for the resort trade to last. Nowadays, it makes its money for importing cars, and it's one of the busiest ports in England. The Oasis score on the island is just terrible. Last month, teachers went on strike because the kids' behaviour was so bad. They weren't on strike for money. They were on strike because the teachers were getting sexually abused and death threats. The island of Sheppey is doomed for this generation. It's gotten so bad that parents are opting to send their kids off the island to get an education or they homeschool them. To go along with the horrendous kids of the Isle of Sheppey, the adults aren't much better. They've worked together though and showed great unity to help achieve in giving Sheerness the highest crime rate in Kent with 181 and a thousand. Man. Presumably, people are released from the nearby prison That's and end church? up making Sheerness a home. There's a lot of poverty here. The road down to the seafront is officially the most deprived in Kent. It doesn't actually look that bad, admittedly, but you know these buildings are just full of grimy bedsits. In fact, almost all the poorest parts of Kent are in Sheerness. It's estimated there's around 800 children here are living Look, in poverty. This place is only 50 miles. Listen, to anybody who lives in Kent, Kent, I'm sure that there's a beautiful side somewhere. And it's up to you to make a video to show us. Until then, this is what I feel. This is, this is my picture of it. That's tough. Salute to Kent. Miles from the central part of London. It's like it's been swept under the rug. I also found what I've dubbed Turd Alley. I've never seen this much dog crap in all my life. Ugh. The worst thing is there was a dog poo bin literally at the end of this alley, which makes the people who are doing this the most lazy scumbags ever. This alley leads onto the beach too, so well done, Sheerness. No wonder people don't visit here anymore. The beach and the water is filthy here anyway, so I wouldn't bother. The town centre itself has nothing, but I will say this, it's quite unique and has a certain charm to it. So what can you expect to pay for a house in an isolated town? It doesn't have... I don't, I'm, this did not, no town in this whole video made me want to move there. Not no architect, normally like there's some type of nice looking building or something, nothing. And where kids can't even go to school and jobs are hard to come by. 276,000. It's not even the cheapest on this list. What a rip off. Sheerness is just too small to attract tourists and its reputation has been badly damaged. This area needs investment. It's not even funny. This is exactly what a failing town looks like. The buildings look sad. The people look sad. Dang, turd, calm down. Does your ex live there or something? And by the end of this trip, I was sad. So that's that for another week. I'm just finishing up editing a couple more videos, which will be of you shortly. So make sure you subscribe to not miss out on any of our new episodes. That's tough, turd towns. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone.